Is this the ultimate sweet spot when it comes to new Intel Z270 motherboards? With that said, welcome everybody, today I'll be taking a close look at the ASRock Z270 Extreme 4. This is a motherboard that supports Intel's 7th generation processors, codenamed Cable Lake. The Z270 chipset allows for overclocking, which is something we'll be taking a look at in this review as well. Currently, this board comes in at a pretty attractive price of roughly 180 US dollars. Compared to Z270 offerings of the competition, this one seems to be offering a bit more more for the money. However, let me tell you, while it does look perfect to some of you, it definitely is not. I noticed several things that bothered me. The board first of all comes with nice packaging. In it, the Z270 Extreme 4 board itself, zip tied to some form, the I.O. shield, then M.2 socket screws, a total of three, yes I can count, I know I'm just showing you just two, four black SATA cables, and super kind of ASRock is to include an NVIDIA high bandwidth as leverage. Of course the quick installation and software setup guide, a driver CD along with an ASRock sticker, and last but not least, for some weird reason, a postcard. Now in terms of looks, although always a matter of preference, I have mixed opinions on this one. The majority of the board to me personally looks stunning with the beautiful black and white accents and that big X right in the middle of the board. However, I dislike the design of the white plastic shroud on the left, covering up the I.O. and audio aspect. Now believe it or not, this board does come with RGB lighting. Yes, RGB lighting. These days RGB seems to be everywhere. But aesthetics aside, let's focus on the important things. First of all, the Z270 Extreme 4 features the new Intel Z270 chipset, which brings a lot of new connectivity capabilities to the table, but also support for Intel's new feature, Obtain Memory. However, we'll have to wait and see if that one will really take off. Intel LG 1151 socket, so support for the new 7th generation Cable Lake as well as previous gen Skylake CPUs. 10 phase VRM power design, that should be decent enough for some overclocking, and the PCH and VRM aluminum heatsinks will help keep crucial board components cool. At a price of $180, we should expect quality components on here, and ASRock doesn't disappoint with its 45 amp power chokes and Nichicon 12K black capacitors all over the board. 4 DDR4 memory DIMM slots with dual channel XMP2 Pro support and frequencies of up to 3866 MHz only in single channel however and up to 3733 MHz in dual channel. 64 GB is the max capacity. As for expansion slots, 3 PCI 3.0 X16 slots, 2 of which are reinforced, and 3 PCIe 3.0 X1 slots, 3-way crossfire and 2-way SLI support. As for the configurations, the first slot runs at X16 with a single graphics card installed, X8 X8 in 2-way, and X8 X8 X4 in 3-way crossfire. Storage, now that's where Z270 really shines. This board in fact comes with a total of 8 SATA 6 gigabit per second ports, 6 of which run off the Z270 chipset and two of a third-party as media controller. Kudos to ASRock for adding two extra ports. SATA Express, a feature on Z170 boards that never took off, is abolished here. A good move, I never really liked SATA Express. The six Intel SATA ports support RAID 0, 1, 5 and 10. On board are two M.2 slots supporting SATA 6 gigabit per second and PCIe 3.0 X4 modules. NVMe SSD support, of course. U.2 drives, however, are only supported with an M.2 to U.2 adapter card. Such is not included here. Up to 8 cm long Type 2280 M.2 modules can be installed into the top slot, and up to 11 cm Type 22110 modules into the bottom one. Please note that these M.2 slots share lanes with these SATA ports. This means when installing M.2 two modules, certain SATA ports will be disabled. In terms of audio, ASRock's Purity Sound 4 is based on Realtek's new ALC 1220 H-channel 7.1 HD audio codec with an impressive 120 decibel SNR DAC, a TINE5532 premium headset amplifier for front panel audio, now able to drive up to 600 ohm headphones. Also worth noting the Nichicon Fine Gold Sears audio capacitors, individual PCB layers for the left and right channels, impedance sensing on the front out port, and of course course EMI shielding isolating the audio circuitry from the rest of the board. So finally, that's a major upgrade from the ALC1150 codec. The new ALC1220 sounds incredible. On board for LAN is Intel's i219V controller. A dish 
additionally on the upper left corner of the board is an M.2 socket key E that supports a Type 2230 Wi-Fi Bluetooth module. Altogether, there are 5 fan headers all across the motherboard, 2 for the CPU and 3 system fan headers. Of the 5 headers in total, 2 are labeled as water pump, which means these headers support a maximum of 1.5 amps 18 watts. As for headers in general, we have the front panel, the power LED and speaker headers, serial port COM, then the TPM header, 3 USB 2.0 headers, yes 3, following that the Thunderbolt AIC connectors, the Aura RGB LED header, which lets you connect an RGB LED extension cable and control it from the board, right next to it the clear CMOS jumper and the front panel HD audio header. On the right side of the board, 2 USB 3.1 Gen 1 headers. As for power, the usual 24-pin ATX and 8-pin ATX 12V power connections. What I like a lot is the fact that the Z270 Extreme 4 in its price range sports two physical bias chips, one main and one for backup. Now that's all great, but let's talk about the things I dislike now. First of all, although not critical, the RGB lighting does make a bit of a cheap impression with unclean color tones. Then what I miss seeing here are onboard power and reset buttons, as well as a debug LED. Those were present on the Z170 Extreme 4, not on the Z270 version, however. Now let's speak I.O. Right there we have a antenna port bracket. Bracket, PS2 combo, two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, HDMI, DVI-D and for some reason a VGA output for the Intel HD graphics, then two USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, Type A and C respectively, the five audio jacks plus an optical SPDIF output, and last but not least two more USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports and the Gigabit LAN port. Sadly, my specific model of this port is partly defect. By that I mean the Gigabit LAN port is dead and the two USB ports below of it randomly disconnect from time to time or don't work at all. But I'm not factoring in this issue for my review. I'd have to RMA it and I'd be fine. Everything else works like a charm. The bias by ASRock is very tidy and organized. That applies both to the easy mode and advanced mode. We're getting all the must-have settings in this bias for overclocking, load line calibration, aura RGB LED, system browser, instant flash for easy bias flashing, a good hardware monitor and a very impressive feature fan tuning. This will detect your lowest fan speed and will set it accordingly to the temperatures with the goal of having a silent system, especially an idle. For better control of the LEDs on the board, I'd recommend installing the Aura RGB LED software from ASRock's website. This utility allows us to set different colors and effects for the three lighting zones, or four if you have an LED strip connected. The A-tuning software basically is an overclocking and monitoring utility. How well does the Z270 Extreme 4 overclock though? My Intel i7-7700K managed to achieve 5 GHz stable at a V-core of 1.408 volts. The voltage is a bit high, but hey, at least stable 5 GHz. A more realistic overclock would be 4.8 GHz though. I managed to get my 7700K stable at that clock speed with a core voltage of 1.280 volts. That's not too bad actually. Sure, we'd see even better overclocking results with the motherboard with more phases, but for a 10 phase power design, impressive results. So the ASRock Z270 Extreme 4 is a very decent motherboard after all. It has some weaknesses, but none of them are critical whatsoever. With this board, we're getting a fairly good overall package of connectivity, performance, and overclocking capabilities. The onboard audio sounds amazing compared to previous generation boards. Priced at $180, currently that's a great value. Despite some imperfections, I can definitely recommend the ASRock Z270 Extreme 4. Because of the attractive pricing, I just have to give it my gold award. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one.